Well, that is the beautiful gaze of Amber Eyes. The youngest female has now walked, and I think she must be very close to the boundary because she's just keeping pushing and forging west, which is keeping the rest of the pride moving as well. So they keep moving and then lying down, moving and lying down. So if one of them just lies down properly, and they should then all settle but as soon as one moves you're going to have a situation that they're going to follow each other which is not really ideal because we want them to stay for as long as possible on Juma. I know it's selfish but it is the way it is. We enjoy spending time with the Nkuma Pride and it would be really nice just to have them here for longer than a quick half hour or hour in the morning. I certainly would love to see them spend a lot of time here like they did last year. What have you seen Ambies? That's it. Look that way. That's the better way to walk. She's seen something for sure. I don't see anything though. Unless that other female's moving just to get around whatever she's seen. But something caught her gaze very quickly as she went from flat to moving quite fast. Magical, you want to know at what age do the cubs get to refer to as sub-adults? Um, I suppose now, actually. Now they should be sub-adults. Anywhere between just over a year and two years up until they reach sexual maturity, which is generally in the females around three, three and a half, and then you'll find the males is about the same. So sub-adults will be used for them fairly shortly. We can not really call them cubs anymore. They are getting massive. See, here come some of the cubs now, well, actually the sub-adults, let's start from today, we'll start calling them sub-adults today. But hopefully here comes the rest, and actually that's one of the adult lionesses that's coming. So I would imagine Mfuma will be on his way shortly, now Amber Eyes has decided whatever it was is not worth it, and up she goes as well. So this is them moving towards the boundary, unfortunately. I was hoping that something would have piqued their interest further away, that they would have gone back into Juma. Because now the time is when you need a wildebeest or a zebra to arrive, because that will make life a lot better for all of us. It will certainly bring these lines deeper in. You can see that lioness is also looking in the same direction that Amber Eyes was looking. I wonder if she's not spotted something. No, she's also decided not worth it. And that's the female that's got that eye injury, so you can see her different colored eye on the right hand side. Well, it's not, it's not an injury, it's just it looks like a glaucoma that's developing over that eye. It doesn't look as milky as it once did. It used to look very milky, but now it seems to be okay. Look at that beautiful golden light. Isn't that pretty? Hello, girls. I'm pretty sure we'll see the male coming shortly. He's not going to let these females too far out of his sight. Ali, you want to know if there's a meaning behind the name of Amber Eyes? You mean other than the fact that she has Amber Eyes? So she's that's why she's called Amber Eyes, is because her eyes are amber. There's no other hidden meaning there. That's just because of the eye color itself. Here comes some waddling cubs now as well. Look how fat they are, Seb. It's very cool to see. So they're just coming through that little thicket, but they are waddling. They are not walking at all. Their bellies are swinging from side to side, and kind of legs are opened up a little bit just to be able to allow for those bellies to move. <laughs> it's like when lion cubs get fat. They always look so funny when they walk. Although, like I said, they're not cubs anymore. I keep calling them cubs, but it's just habits, I suppose. But they are definitely no longer cubs. If you look at the size of them, they're starting to resemble adults as well. They've got these serious looks about them. Noses are starting to go darker. And size-wise, they're getting very big. A few nicks in the ear already. So we have often talk about how to age cats and we say that nicks in the ears and colors of noses are indicative of their age. Hello girl. So we've got a lioness walking right next to the car as you can see there. Um, she's the one with the hole in the tummy and the scrape on the ear which seems to be okay. It doesn't seem to be too bad. 
I've looked at this morning and it seems as though it was all right. There wasn't too much damage that I could see there. Here come the rest of the cubs, the littlest one at the back. Interesting their eye colors. Some of them have these deeper amber eyes and then others the very pale yellow that we see in the adults. So it's an interesting difference in the colors. There's the amber eyed one coming through. Isn't this beautiful though with the light? Incredible. I still don't see Mfumo coming. He seems to be still resting. Hopefully he decides he's going to stay here for the day. Although I would be very, very surprised if he doesn't follow and move into this direction. No, he's not coming with, so let's carry on and try and catch up with the rest of them while we still have them. Well, Rez, you want to know how we identify individual lions. Well, it's a lot harder than identifying leopards because you don't have a spot pattern that you can follow nicely around the face. You've got a few whisker spots that you can use and then tears in the ears, eye color, um, what else do we use? Body shape, any indicative scars. So with Mfumo, that scar underneath his right eye is very indicative of him. And that's basically what we'll use is those sort of IDing features. But these guys are going to cross now in the next five minutes, I would say. Not even. I wonder if Mfumo is going to come, if it's not just worth waiting for him to come past. Because I saw he had his... his head up as I went past there. Let's have a look now if he's coming. Don't see him now, but he did have his head up. He was looking in this direction and I'm sure once he realizes he's been left behind. Oh, there he is. I can actually see him. He's just lying down in the distance looking straight in this direction. Muddy, you're being left behind. You're going to have to make your way. Now you can hear the impalas are alarm calling at these lions. The impalas are just south of us. And that's what these lions were obviously watching was the impalas coming out of the bush. But he is... Can you see him there, Seb? No. There, he's walking towards you now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, he's coming straight this way. I knew he wouldn't stay back for too long. At the end of the day, females are always an attractant for males, and so they're not going to allow the females to get too far away before they start coming. So, Fumo is just probably wants to sleep and doesn't want to move so much, but I think Fumo's moving, he's got to get up and start striding as well. But he's looking really good. His mane is filling out and becoming more and more of an impressive individual. And with his scars and his cuts and scrapes, he becomes really quite a menacing lion. You'll find the Nena and Nsuko are pretty lions, but Tinyo and Mfumo have all these scars and really look like big bruising male lions that have gone around the block and have had to fight their way to dominance, which is always nice. A character-filled lion is how they should be, or particularly wild lions. They should be character-filled and scars and scrapes, and for me anyway. Sierra, you say would it be appropriate to call the cubs yearlings, or is that just for cattle? Um, yeah, they don't refer to them as yearlings here in, in terms of the cats. Cats are generally cubs, sub-adults, and then adults. There's very seldom you'll hear the word yearling for a cat species. You generally only hear it for antelopes and the likes. Right. Where he, the, the rest of the pride is, is a nice dense thicket. So let's try and see if we can't keep up. It's going to be an interesting one to try and keep up with these guys. But we'll try our very best. And hopefully they're going to lie down before they get to the main road. But I don't hold too much hope. The fact that they've walked right past these impalas and are not too worried about the impalas alarm calling at them and that they're not moving back in this direction would suggest that they're not really too concerned by what's going on. 
Um, just trying to see where's the best way is to get through here. Follow Aubrey. Aubrey will know. Spent more than enough time in this particular area, so he should know this place better than anyone, really. The problem is, is there's a little drainage and lots of thickets, so they might lie inside there if they decide that they're feeling a little on the tired side, but I think they're off for water. That's really where they're going. So that's why Red Dam is the next stop, I would imagine. It's going to be a lot like what we've seen, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then eventually get there. Now I'm going to try and see if I can't just find them one last time for one last look before they cross over and out of our area. While we do that, let's go back to Jamie in the Mara and see where she is and whether she's had any luck with those spotted cats.